I remember reading an article once in, a, in an English magazine written by a guy named uh, David Pomeroy. It was a really interesting piece that was somewhat of a rebuttal to several other writers' opinion that in No Limit Hold'em, the standard preflop raise should be precisely three times the big blind. So with blinds at 50 and 100, you should always raise it to 300. Well, Pomeroy believes that always doing anything in poker is generally a bad idea, and I do agree with that. The problem I had with Pomeroy's response was his reasoning for raising different amounts before the flop. For example, he said that from early position with a hand like pocket eights, you would want to make a larger raise in order to knock out the rest of the field. He also advocated raising more on the dealer button since position is paramount in No Limit Hold'em. Now, with trash hands, his theory was that you could make smaller raises, thus losing less when your bluff attempts don't work out. Now, in his article, he writes that by making the standard raise of three times the blind in all situations, you become too predictable as a player. Now, the problem with his theory, though, is that any good observant poker player will be able to decipher a pattern in his play based on his raising amounts. Essentially, he's giving away even more information about his hand by his bet size. He's already shared that he prefers to make larger raises from early position with middle pairs. Well, if you ever see him make that play, you'd have a much better read on his hand. He also mentions that his smaller raises are ones that are more likely to be bluffs. Now, unless Pomeroy is going to mix up continually his play and veer from that strategy, he'll in fact become more predictable, precisely the thing he was trying to avoid. As I said though, I agree with him that simply sticking to a pre-flop strategy of raising three times the blind in all situations, it's just not the best approach. However, my reasoning for changing my bet size will depend on a completely different set of factors that have nothing to do with the strength of my hand and everything to do with my opponent's tendencies. For example, let's say I'm on the button and the players in the blinds are extremely conservative. If everyone folds to me on the button and I'm looking to steal the blind, I can now take advantage of the fact that my opponents are going to fold way too many marginal hands for a small raise. If the blinds are 1 in 200, I could possibly get away with stealing a very tight player's blind for the bare minimum, risking 400 to win 300. Conversely, if I was going to attempt a bluff raise against a very loose player that's going to defend their blind religiously, <laughs> three times the blind may not be enough. Against the loose player in the big blind, I may have to raise as much as five times the blind to force him to fold. The other consideration is your opponent's overall skill level after the flop. If the player in the big blind plays very poorly after the flop, then you might want him to defend his blind in the hopes you can exploit his weaknesses after the flop. Against a terrible player, raising the minimum, or two and a half times the blind, might actually make more sense. Now, if you happen to be up against very tough players, you know, a guy who makes really good decisions after the flop, you really don't want him to call with a wide variety of hands. Instead, you'd rather try to define his hand with a much larger raise. That should help narrow down his possible holdings, as well as help you avoid confrontations against a really, really scary player. So, while in theory I agree with Pomeroy in that you shouldn't limit yourself to raising the same amount before the flop regardless of the situation, I completely disagree with his reasoning. By raising the same amount in every situation, you give no clues at all as to the strength of your hand. By following Pomeroy's advice, expert players, well, they're going to pick up on your betting patterns and they're going to exploit that knowledge. By actually making larger raises against good loose players and less against weak tight players, you'll be mixing up your pre-flop play somewhat, but the only information that you'll be giving away is information regarding your perception of your opponents and not information revealing the strength of your hand.